Well, it's totally awesome fishing time again, guys. I have been clearing out my files again. Boy, I tell you what, I hope YouTube doesn't crash because there are no films. I have not backed anything up really, except a few final movies. All the master clips are going. And it's just pretty well just one week into the start of the UK fishing season. I thought I'm going to give my supporters a little taste of all-round angling. That's lakes, river and a bit of fly fishing before I delete them. I think it encapsulates everything that we freshwater anglers like about fishing other than catching fish. And I think you might appreciate watching it before I throw them all away. Enjoy. The rod is the Avon rod, five pound, six pound line, whatever. Sliding, feeder, I don't know what type they call those. But I've got barrel saw there, because if I do cast fire and then want to go out, I don't want a shot if I put it there sliding down and altering my link. Link's probably about seven inches, and the hook there, about size 10, is one of those grips things that's uh, on the inside of the, not barbed, it's got ridges in it, it's a barbless, but it's got a funny shaped ridge which help hold maggots and worms on, that's what I feel anyway. I've also got a few garden worms I've dug as well. I put too much, damped them a bit too much, but I didn't damp them with uh, tap water because the chlorine I believe kills the worms. I've just used regular rainwater out the uh, fish pond. I'm going to put a couple of worms up the shank, pop them over the eye. And I've always done quite well. Four tenths, we're tipping off. Oh, I've probably said it loads of times. Probably forget get fed up with me saying it. It's just the way I fish, just the way I'm doing it. A couple of red mags on the end. I think it's just the wriggling of the red maggots. I'm going to put three on to allow for one to come off because it is a barbless hook. So it's garden worms, and the other one I'm going to be using these are dendrobenas. So we try a regular garden worm on one, and dendrobenas on the other. I haven't put any feed out there at all at the moment. I'm just going to fill this feeder up, just like you see me doing it now. It's probably come out on impact, and I've I have bumped a, a feeder out there, trying to see if it was uh, really weedy. It doesn't appear to be too much weed out there. Now, when you cast this type of feeder, some does come off. In fact, it can all come off if you try and cast too hard. Check, kids, always check overhead trees. It's very easy. The swim next door is where I moved. I said to Lee, don't fancy that at night casting out because I could clip a tree, and I've done it a lot over the years. And when we look up there, there is indeed a feeder up there. So I'm going to go straight out with this. I'm using that big tree there as my guide. Not going too far. I'm going to let the fish find me. I sink in the line like this, tweaking it. So it's in a straight line. I do one bump. That's all I'm doing. I'll show you why. Check drag, oh dear, that's on carp, carp, that's better, that's on grass carp, drag that was. Now I've mixed up some uh, ground bait balls here. About the size, I would think of the feeder, and quite tight. A ground bait catapult, which we've mentioned before, I think I've had a bite on that one. That's going to be small fish, just slack that off. I broke it recently, but I've repaired it, but look, putting a nut, a double-sized washer there, and a nut on the other side, and hopefully when it goes up and comes back, it doesn't crack me on the knuckles. I like to wet it first. The thing is, if you do small ground bait balls, 
you uh, have to be careful of not overshooting the mark. So we'll see where this one goes. There's no point in uh, going too far, you can't reach it at night. Now that's gone farther, so I'm trying to get that line in, in line with that tree, the highest tree there. A little bit farther. Don't mind putting one left or right, because at the end of the day, those fish will browse in and out of there, hopefully. It's absolutely still as still as you could want. The wind's gone, the air movement's gone. I phoned wifey just to get the uh, full, full legal clearance. <laughs> and uh, all good there. She said it's very muggy there. So, no, it's quite cool here, but I mean, I'll just put a hoodie on. Get your hoodies from Mike Pullen, support us. Um, I know what I'm going to say, because I'm fishing sort of old school with the washing up bottle tops, but they're red. I used to paint them white, but before that we used, we used to use silver paper. So the last fishing trip I had, I made some up from the old sandwich wrapper, you know, baking foil. Folded it all up like we used to, but what we also do was used to bend a flange on it so that when you put a head torch on it like this or indeed the light from the indicator would reflect off of that and you could see exactly immediately which one it was now because I, I do realize that modern times up to 35 years ago you just get an isotope and put it on there well that's fine but old school we just had we didn't have bivvies they weren't invented it was an umbrella maybe a luxury would be a piece of plastic over the top of it and then just bits of silver paper. So I am on silver paper at the moment. I'll see if I can show you. I do not speak with forked tongue people. Right. That's the camera off. That's the camera on. Obviously it lights everything up. Now I'm just going to leave it with my head torch. Watch. That's off. This is really low light. Immediately I can see those. Middle power. M power and I'm miles away from it. I'm probably nine feet away from those bobbins. So don't neglect silver paper but with the angle folded back. Just there. So from where I sit when I put my head torch on it bounces back. And of course they weigh next to nothing. There you go look. I actually put the hook size up a bit so I could put a bigger worm on. folks another clonking great big Hawquot tench there he is that's a nice fish so you can see there what we used to call his little red eye Jim <laughs> anybody know where that's from a lot more calm than the uh, common carp so here we go I go in five pounds, I'd say it's five pounds that one. That's why I up the hook size guys. Have no trouble with that mouth there, have they? Beautiful fish. I do like the tench. Tension bar, what's the last little bit of England we got left, isn't it really? Well roach as well I suppose. They don't like catfish but they're forward, aren't they? Well, it appears the Oh nearly. Here the rud and the perch obviously don't go through the night, but you hear those little beeps. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't get too panicky with one beep. If you just have one beep, it could be a line bite, which is when a fish moves between your rod top and bumps into the line somewhere in 20 or 30 yards, however long you're casting. So I don't get too panicky with just one beep. 
what you're looking for really is a long so it's moving away and you can strike into it so when you just get one beep you know sort of be aware as it were because it could be a drop back bite as well but generally I find my experience one beep maybe maybe two it could be wind it could be something on the line where the uh, rod top enters the water you know where the line goes into the water a piece of weed something like that or it could be or it could be a small fish one hopes but you heard then how the uh, the run as it were was not just one beep I was waiting and waiting for it to actually pull up I don't know what it is whatever it is it's in the bushes <laughs> hang on a minute well I miss that one it come off winning <laughs> winning the bushes so this is what I've been catching on this golf ball feeder and if you'll notice although I missed that bite I've still got the worm on there what's left of it and a bit of twig because I've got that little tiny miniature piece of rubber band on there which is indeed just there and of course I can take it off put it down where I can find it and reload and cast out again oh yeah this is a good one that really calms down hang on a minute normally pretty good tension they check that one a lump and a half well please people wonder why we keep looking to the right it's because the monitor's there so that's the only one so if I look straight at the camera I have to try and look guide it like this to get it in the monitor so big I can't get it in the frame what a thing to say that is so big I can't get it in the frame and the old classic pose used to be sideways like that didn't it looking at it like that mustn't smile if you're a specimen hunter oh my god don't ever smile if you've got a big fish you're not supposed to be happy, you know. <laughs> I'm always happy. I'm now. I feel I dropped the camera in the water. Here he goes. Things they don't look very big in the water, do they? How big was that one I did see? Just take this one out. This is a PB for me. This is the biggest male tench I've, I think I've ever caught. That's ridiculous. What a session. I've given it up for the over and done with. It's a huge, huge, it's a easily the biggest male tench I've ever caught. My God, I didn't even know they grew this big. Please check that one out as a male tench. Look at the size of it. Absolute lump there, is it not? And he took a boy. I don't know what happened with the rod. Did my buzzer not go off properly or what? I've got beeps going off over there, but that's only small fish. Right, let's get this guy back in the water. What an amazing trip. I think I'll come to Hawcott again. It's not bad for day ticket water, is it? Well, there's just something traditional about the tench. The old, good old English tench. I love fishing for them. I like fishing for them on the float best by lily pads. Oh my God, I used to have some catches years ago. I can't even, I don't want to think about them now. I couldn't even lift the net out. And honestly, that's what the fishing was like years ago. Let's just hope there's a few places left where you can enjoy that. Other species I enjoy? Fishing on a river. And one trip stuck out in my mind down in Somerset on a lovely clear stream. I caught so many chub. I'd never even fished here before. It was outlandish. Now what I do is get plenty of water in with the bread, get it all soaked up, it's cheap, cheap bread. So you want it to sink. I mush it just a bit, not too much, that's enough. Just put a kink in the bucket, squeeze the bread back like this, look. So squeezing the bulk of the water out of it and then I just drain it off and then I give it a good old mulch up like this because I want it then it take a bit longer for the crust I'm only looking for two or three fish just to 
make it worthwhile when you go to a new water you're always at a huge disadvantage and you can see that that half a loaf sort of goes to almost nothing all right he says the whirlpool's a small fish so i'm going to aim for chub along that side there that's really my take on it who knows very shallow by the look of it Gonna be noisy guys, the railway line runs across there. I try a big piece of flake, I just go round once, twist it, and just pinch on the eye of the hook. Got five pounds straight through, I've got my trusty old 30-year-old Avon float and 3BB, one about six inches from the hook, and we'll see how long it takes me before it gets snagged up. Wow it's shallow. Just running it down this inside uh, fast stretch first. No, nope. could possibly have done with a match rod. I've come with the Avon rod, and I'm going to probably have trouble ho holding it over there on that far, far edge. That's about where I. I would figure I would be if I was a chub somewhere along that line there. Now that float's holding up lovely there, but of course it could be just on the bottom. And when it's going down at a speed that they can actually see it and take it, but not so slow that they've got too much time to uh, take it, I think I'm going to have to go shallower. I've got a feeling that's dragging on the bottom. Now the current's going to get it. Go a little bit shallower here. Give it a go. Well, I mean, for people living in a built-up area, like it is down here, it's like a mini city. Look at this lovely river. Look at all the flowers and wildlife. Mind you, I haven't seen many ducks, so that's good. Now it's changed here. I'm walking upstream. A lot more streamer weed. I'm asking myself why. You see all this beautiful yellow, whatever. It looks like. Leftover oil seed rape to me. There's a little weir up here. They've got some electrical power lines there back there that says no fishing, but I guess I'm clear of that now. Right, I can see where I want to fish immediately. Isn't it strange? All the years of fishing Hampshire Raven as Dorset Star. Just exactly where I want to fish. Definitely the back of this weed bed. Shouldn't think anybody's fished here. That's got fish written all over it, boys. Sorry. Sorry, but it has. Back of that weed bed down there. Slop ready. We call this slop or in the winter, fishing a Dorset stair, we call it stodge. Like this, stodge. You saw me mash it up, it's just pulped up loaf of bread. Not even a loaf of bread. Half a bread. And I chuck this into the weed. So it breaks it up and tumbles it down. Well, if there's that many chub in this river, I'm putting a bite here first cast. So stupid. Don't say that, Graham. It's so stupid. Put the pressure on. Another thing is, I think they're going to come up on top. If I kept feeding, like this, just bits of leftover crust. This has definitely got to be a chub in here. If I'm catching chub down there, 100% there must be a chub in this swim. Here we go. From there downwards, any time now on, that bread will have sunk about there, I reckon. Now, perhaps I've misread the swim. It happens. Much of, look, they could be here or they could be down there. Might take them a little bit of a while to to find the. No. 
Hey, no, Graham, no. No. You were right. Right in there. Hoo -hoo, can net the fish here. In fact, I should have cast them down there. In fact, let's take some gear down with me, hopefully. It's fairly safe here. Fairly safe, I don't know. No, oh, it looks like a, a dangerous spot. No, nope, we're okay. Um, one of these things is very handy. I've noticed one of these. A net. Stupid child, man. Stupid, stupid child. Christ, I really went. Here he comes. Here he comes. Well, they're scrapping this in this fast current up here. Yeah, get him! He's in! There we go. Hooks out. Two, two and a quarter pounds, I suppose. Well, you might ask yourself why I've actually chosen this lovely little weir pool. Beautiful. By the way, I'm on, I just can't even, 27 chub. The reason I've come up here is because of this. This dark area is called shade because it's at least 30, 31 now. I'm frying. I think the fish are going a little bit. I'm going to set myself a target. 50 chub. That would be over 100 pounds of chub in my estimation. So I'm on 27. I'm going to have a drink, a sandwich, and then I'm going to be baiting up over there and running the float through. It's a nice, clear, well oxygenated pool there. And listen, the city light is only up there. I can't believe how quiet it is here. I thought I'd be bombarded with, with people, you know what I'm saying? I thought I'd be loose feeding prams and shopping trolleys and stuff. It's really, really nice, really nice. It's just nice to be left alone for once and have a bit of peace and quiet. A lovely fast river, absolutely rammed to the gills with chub. Right, let's have something to drink. I'll tell you what, I enjoyed that trip down there. I've enjoyed several trips down on that river. It's only small, it's just a day ticket. It's not some golden ticket, secret scroll, be my friend and I'll be your friend type of place. It's not one of those, no, I don't get asked on those. It's just a regular day ticket water. Fortunately, I've had a lot of river fishing. I can winkle a few fish out. But our rivers are under the cosh. Big pressure. They are nothing like they used to be when I was a kid. Let's hope there's a few fish left for our kids to enjoy that type of sport. Also, what's good, clear water, fly fishing. And I remember a trip down to John O'Gorn's Lake. Goodness me, it was blazing sun. The most untrouty sort of day you could expect. But, but, whammo. Come back to this dark area. I'm just going to let it drop. Drop down really, really deep and then just uh, bring it almost up vertically and see if anything follows it. Is that a fish down there? Yeah. Got one guys, got him, got him on. Just snapped at the fly. There he goes, there he goes. Rainbow. Well, well. Not bad fish, three pounds I'd say. I don't think it was that big one, but listen, this is a nice looking fish. Good fun on a four weight rod. And I'll walk him away here in case I want to come back to that spot. But that was on a nymph coming up almost vertically. Got a bit of. He's off now. Well, I don't want too much of that weed building up on the, uh, on the leader.
a little quiet because I don't know exactly where he's going to go. He's gone way up the lake now, twisting the traction down there. Come on. He's coming in. Another fish just rolled up in front of him there. Very often you get one fish follow the other. That's a nice fish. That's bigger than I thought it was actually. In the sun, summer sunshine. He's getting tired now. He's getting tired, I'm getting anxious. Unclip the net. See if it works after a long time. The twist bit I think rusted up on this, so I've got a, I've got, just got the short net. Short version, shortened version. That, that nymph, that gold red nymph is just in. In his top jaw, I think. He's twisting it like this. Is good chance he can come off, but how he's giving me a good scrap, isn't he? When you do wind up, just watch your leader not going in the tip ring there. Here he comes, here he comes, he's done. He's T. In he goes. Out he goes. That's messing around with the camera. And we'll try again. Got him, boys. There, what a beauty. I'd say that's all over three pounds, that one. So there you go, it's a perfect John O'Gaunt's rainbow. They're always, always, I don't think of ever over the years I've come here, caught a really rough one. Nice flat tail on that. There's the rainbow, which gives it the name rainbow trout. And you can see, chunky across the back. And that should, not too fat, so it's not been overfed. And it's probably been in there, well, maybe going on nymphs and shrimps and stuff like that. You know, maybe snails it'll feed on. Nice long fish, long fish. There we go, guys. That is, is it not a nice trout? And in fantastic summer conditions flies right in the scissors i thought it's in the top the fly i'll oh, see i'll leave it there you can see where the fly is look flies just there snapped at it towards the top and all i saw was a white flash of a mouth i didn't actually see the fly go this time just saw the white flash of the mouth great fish now should i try dry fly might be worth a shout Guys, come on, hooked up on the indicator right on the inside. I think it's a good fish. Might be a lost fishy on right through the weed now at the other side. I can't keep a bit of pressure on him. I don't want to pull him back into this weed. I think he's clear. He's buried into something. He's buried into something. I see all the weed and bubbles. Might have lost him, don't know. No, he's still on. Oh, oh, he's a nice fish. He's a nice one. Aren't they all? It looks like a brownie. I don't say it's a brownie. Come on, boy. He's got a weed on the sight indicator. Is that brown? Wow, wow. Guys, that's a big fish. That is a big fish. That is a big fish. That's a brownie. Oh, what a fish. I'm pretty sure it's a brown. Here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes, I'm trying to walk down with him. Unusual to get a brown in the middle of the day. Big brown, big brown boys. Wowee, look at that fish, on a suspended buzzer. Where's my little pliers? Handy, this is a bank. Check that one out, boys. A 
great big long beautiful brown water as well. Well I enjoyed that type of fishing. It is a little bit of a special treat for you guys before I throw those clips away and it is coming into the best of all that type of fishing. We'll see you in the next film. Hopefully I catch half as many fish as I did on that one. I will be happy and I must go through the files. If you enjoyed this type of montage put together, let me know before I wipe all the hard drives out and delete everything. or see if I've got other sea stuff or beach stuff or something like that. See you next time. Hit that subscribe button. TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. See if we can creep past whatever it is. People keep saying 300,000. Look, I always say hit the subscribe button. I oh, don't mind if you don't hit it. I'm not really bothered by how many people subscribe. Mike Scott, what have I even thought about it? Is it? two million point whatever, I know it's a ridiculous number. The main thing is, I am 70 years old and I'm still at hopefully that top end of being able to produce fish for you guys on all round fishing. I think I'm the only one doing it. Thanks for supporting us guys and we'll see you in the next film. Boom! I want one of those big tench again.